Hello, welcome back to Wudang Academy. 欢迎来到武当学院的线上课程。This is a cultural class on Wu Xing, the Five Elements. As part of the Qi Gong seminar, we made this seminar、uh, on the Wu Xing. The five elements, known as Wu Xing, consist of the gold or the metal, Jing, and wood, Mu, water, Shui, fire, Huo, and finally earth, Tu. Jing. Mu, Shui, Huo, Tu. This is the common order you will hear、uh, Chinese people talk about the five elements.、Uh, in a similar sense to Western culture, in ancient Greece, they have the four elements. So it is an attempt by ancient Chinese people to categorize the phenomena or the elements, the basic ingredients. In nature, and in this framework, they try to understand the world. Let's look at the name. Wu Xing,、uh, although commonly translated as the five elements, the word Xing in Chinese, in fact, refers to action, operation, or movement. So, in fact, the concept refers to something more dynamic. But it is associated with the names of those five elements. The development of the concept of the five elements or the five energies、uh, can be found in written records. As early as the West Zhou period, Xi Zhou, there was already the concept or theory of Wu Cai, the five materials, and you can find quotes such as.、Uh, From earth mixed with metal, wood, water, and fire to make all things, and also heaven made the five elements, and people make use of them、uh, in combination. Not one is dispensable, and this shows you the concept that the five elements form the complete constituents of nature. If you take any one away, The system is incomplete. Also, we see in records where the five elements have been written、uh, in reference to timing for agriculture activities, and research shows that an older version of calendar existed in、um, Chinese history may have had five seasons, not four. And very important concept of this is that from the basic elements, you will have infinite possibilities. So here's a quote from Sun Tzu Bing Fa,、uh, Sun Tzu Art of War, which many of you may already know. And the chapter five of this says something about military deployment in battle tactics. Basically, has the normal and the abnormal, and from the combination of those, you have infinite tactics. And it says, you only have five notes in music. It is said so because in Chinese scale of music, it's a pentatonic system. You have five notes, but the combination of the five sounds makes music more than you can ever hear. There are only five colors, but the combination of five colors form more colors can, that can be depleted. And there are only five tastes, and it goes on like this. So from the finite elements, there are infinite combinations and infinite com-、uh, possibilities. Next, we look at、uh, two very important. Examples in the development of the concept. First one is what's called the Wu De Zhong Shi Shuo. It means the cycle of the five virtues. 
Uh, this is something that uh, arised as political propaganda in ancient China as a justification for the change of government. So the new dynasty, when they establish the rule, they say, I represent the element that will replace the previous one. Such as the Zhou dynasty is associated with fire, and therefore the Qing dynasty claimed to be representing the virtue of water, and water conquers fire. Later on, a different version was known when Shan Rang occurred, which means an emperor or ruler would voluntarily give the position to the new government. And in such a case, the relation is different. The previous element nurtures the new element, and the new government claims to represent or be associated with the new element. And secondly, in Neijing, or in full name, Huangdi Neijing, we see the five elements being applied to record of medical studies. And this stimulated the development of medical research or record in terms of the five elements later on. So the system of Chinese medicine is written largely in such structure of understanding. The fact that the five elements corresponding to the five virtues uh, had been used as political propaganda to justify the rule of a new king or emperor is of course because that the concept is already deep inside the society. There are two very important relations between the five elements or the five energies, uh, known as shen and ke. So commonly, people refer to the relations as xiang shen and xiang ke. Shen means to generate or to give life to something, and ke is to conquer something, to suppress something, or destroy. So first, we look at the generation relations, starting with probably the more intuitive examples. Water would nurture wood, and the wood would supply fire. Fire would nurture earth, and earth generates metal, which, of course, uh, you find metal when you dig into the earth. And then metal give rise to water. This is the generation cycle. And then we look at the conquering or destruction cycle. Here again, starting from the obvious, we know that water will suppress fire, fire melts gold or metal, and metal can chop wood, and wood would hold the earth, and earth will absorb water. And here you see the two complete relationships defining how the energies interact. Now the five elements or the five energies are to categorize the phenomena in nature to understand the world. And therefore, Chinese people tried to find correspondences to the five elements wherever they can. So we see a lot of things associated one by one to the five energies or elements. Let's look at first the orientation. So look at this, this is a map of the directions. The first thing you would notice that is uh, the north is at the bottom. Now, for those of you who have been already in a school uh, some time, you know this is the Chinese view. Like when we do Ba Gua Zhang, we start at the north position and we look to the south. 
the most commonly accepted hypothesis of this is that this was determined by the climate and also the fact that China is located at the northern hemisphere. Because of the structure of the building in the north would be most efficient in sunlight usage if it would face south. And in winter, it's really cold. You actually need to have this acceptance to sunlight. So it is conventional that important Chinese buildings sit on the north and look to the south. And hence, you also see this uh, in a lot of the temples, even in the south, they will follow the same convention. And now you have Dong, Nan, Xi, Bei, Zhong, which is east, south, west, north, and the center. So now let's look at the correspondence of the directions with the elements. The center part is earth, and on the eastern side, because the east coast is more humid, then you have more vegeta uh, vegetation, so this is corresponded with wood, and the south is hot and fire. The north is cold and water. The west side corresponds to metal, also indeed you find more metal there. Then we look at the correspondence with seasons, and this has to do partly with how the seasonal winds uh, operate in China. So you find the spring, which uh, is the first season from the east, and then summer coming from the south, and it's heat, fire. Also, the seasonal wind uh, in summer comes from the south. And then the autumn, which is metal, coming from the west. Also, the Chinese tradition has autumn as the time of execution. So uh, the people with death penalty, they are killed in autumn. So this is also why it's associated with uh, killing and metal. And finally, the north is associated with cold and the north wind and winter. And there are the animals, the mythical animals of Chinese culture. They also have correspondence on this map. First, also you see that there is color on this map. These are the five colors previously mentioned. And they are associated with the animals. So, in the north, you find Xuan Wu, which is the dark turtle, and of particular importance to Wudang culture. On the east, you have the dragon, cyan dragon, or the green dragon. South, the fire bird, right? This is the Zhu Chue. And on the west, you have the white tiger. And you might be familiar already uh, with the saying, and that comes from here. So if for a building of Chinese convention, you will be sitting on north, looking to the south, then the left side has the dragon and the right side has the tiger. So an interesting thing that you may notice is if you go to a conventional Chinese temple, there is the saying that you should enter from the door, if you're facing the temple, you have to enter from the door on the right. This is Ru Longmen. And then when you exit, you go out from the other side, Chu Hu Ko, escape from the mouth of the tiger. So to talk about the origin of animal qigong exercise, we have to mention the very famous Chinese medical doctor, Hua Tuo, in the Han Dynasty. Now, Hua Tuo is the very first person uh, 
probably known to do very in-depth uh, surgeries. And at that time, of course, it's a very rare kind of knowledge. He's also known to use uh, anesthetics to paralyze the patient, so when he cuts into the patient, it's not so painful. And he knows to make the tools clean by keeping them in ethanol or something when not used, you know, when it's not in use. Um, so there's a very famous story uh, called Gua Gu Liao Du uh, in San Guo Yan Yi, the Three Kingdoms, right? The story goes uh, Guan Yu, which uh, might be recognized as the general with the big blade, uh, but in fact, he is also the character that represents uh, virtue of loyalty and honesty. Anyway, uh, at his later age, uh, he was still going to the battlefield and he got a, uh, an arrow in his arm, which is actually poisoned, and the poison touched the bone. And he would have to make this operation to scrape off the poison so that he can survive. So Hua Tuo in the story was the doctor that uh, did the operation. And there he said, this process will be extremely horrible and painful. Soldiers come, uh, please tie your general to the pillar so he wouldn't move in the process. And Guan Yu said, what are you talking about? Just tie my hand, I'll, I'll stay here. And he was playing chess and drinking tea when the operation was in process. At the end, he stood up and said, sir, you have got like skills. And he replied, general, you have got like courage. That was the story. Uh, in actual history, Hua Tuo himself didn't actually do the operation. It's possible by that time he was already killed. Another doctor did it. Hua Tuo is a character that uh, mixed many different stories, and some of them might be myths. But he's an actual character in history, and we know the year when he was killed. Myths aside, we know that he left us with a legacy, which is Wu Qing Xi. Wu Qing Xi consists of the movements mimicking five animals. So this is called Wu Qing Xi, the five animals play. And the five animals in what's believed to be the earliest version are Hu, Lu, Xiong, Yuan, Niao, which are tiger, deer, bear, ape, and bird. Now this is believed to be the earliest version of five animal practice. And here is what's uh, said about it. So here, lao dong means labor or just exercise. So that means the human body desires exercise, but don't do it to the extreme. Dong yao zhe gu qi de xiao. It means move, and then the uh, negative qi will be eliminated. Now, in Taoist culture or Chinese medicine, it is believed that the grains we eat have some negative effect, and this has to be taken away. And then your circulation is unblocked and activated. Illness will not arise. So this is to the analogy of a pivot point of the door. So if the door is used regularly, the pivot always rotates. And that's why insects or fungi will not go there and destroy the structure. And so the human body in the saying is just like the pivot point, move and it maintains the good condition. So it is important to understand the correspondence of the five elements or the five energies with the human body. So here from the quotes uh, stating the properties or tendency of the elements, 
we also find the correspondency to the different body parts. So starting from the water, and this is uh, in the order of the quotation where this came from, water represents a nourishing uh, and falling and cold power. So it is associated with water in the body, which means the kidneys and the gallbladder. Here you see two parts of the organs in the classification. In Chinese medicine, there is zhang and fu. The zhang is the primary organ, and fu is understood as the supporting or the lesser organs. And the same goes for each one. Fire is associated with heat and rising. This is the heart and the small intestine. Wood is growth and development. And this is associated with the liver and also the gallbladder. Uh, metal is settling and killing and restrained. It is associated with the lungs. And for the supporting organ, it is the large intestine. And finally, the earth is associated with supporting, supporting life, supporting everything. And it is associated with the spleen and also the stomach. So basically, uh, the spleen and stomach, uh, they are understood in Chinese medicine as uh, the parts of a digestive system. They are together. So with all the context above, we have come to the Wu Xing Qi Gong, which we do in this school. First, if we look at the name, Wu Xing Qi Gong, written as in the title, Wu Xing, referring to the five elements or the five energies. It also exists, this other name, so you can see it written as Wu Xing or Wu Xing. The second one, the Xing, meaning the form or shape, and it refers to five animals. It's more common to see the five elements, but both names are correct. Now, following Hua Tuo's Wu Qing Xi, there have been a lot of different animal exercises derived from that. And many of them, you can see in different schools, most of them doing dynamic movements, maybe gradual or maybe faster. At the Sanfeng Pai, this particular set we do focuses on holding postures which stimulate circulation. And this is the way this set works. And all the five animals, they each have correspondence to one element and therefore to one major organ. So written in the order of the actual form we do, it is long, hu, bao, she, he, the dragon, the tiger, the leopard, the snake, and finally the crane. As we know, the dragon corresponds to water, and this is the kidney, and tiger to metal and to lungs, the leopard to the liver to wood and the snake to earth and to the spleen, the crane to fire and the heart. So if we look at the requirement of the movements of each animal, we can understand how the exercises work. Now in each animal, the movements are coordinated with breathing, and this is the key of the qigong. Now for the dragon, the requirement is on the tension, so the tension going up and down on the pushing hand and the standing leg will stretch the body vertically. At the same time, the rotation sideways stimulates circulation to the waist area and the kidney. The tiger focuses on stretching the chest in the backward and forward movements. So when pushing forward, it will stretch the back and when stretching backwards, we'll open the chest. And this is to activate and stimulate the lungs. 
The leopard is emphasizing on the stretching sideways and therefore uh, it stimulates the meridians connected with liver. The jingmai, the meridians in Chinese medicine. Next, the snakes is grounded movement and in the really long stretching posture it stimulates the meridians connected with the digestive system and this is the spleen. Finally, the crane stands on single leg and in balancing the requirement is to stay calm and concentrated and here it emphasizes to calm down the heart and to be in peace and balance. So here we have all the five animals in the Wu Dang San Feng Pai Wu Xing Qi Gong. So the Wu Xing Qi Gong in our system consists of very simple and clear movements. They're very easy to learn for beginners, but they are really effective. It is important to keep the consistency and intensity in your practice. Apart from all the context we have looked at today, you have to practice. And also keep in mind that in the spirit of Wu Xing, the five energies form a complete system and they support each other. So it is important to understand that we cannot only emphasize exercising one movement thinking I only need to strengthen this part. The whole body, all the organs have to be trained consistently and at the same level of intensity. And therefore in your practice, you should try to make the same effort for all five movements for all the animals. This was the first cultural class we have planned for the Udang school. Later on, we will have more comments and the contents will come up very soon about Chinese culture and a lot of the Taoist context and the martial art we practice in the school. We will see you in the next time. Thank you for watching.